As you see, it's Alan here. I'm just going to show a few records which are weird, esoteric, eclectic, eccentric, but just plain weird. This is Tom Johnson's Nine Bells. If you see down here, these are the patterns which uh, correspond to each of the movements that he made as he struck bells. He'd walk around a room in his soft plimsolls, which you can hear squeaking, and uh, he'd create a sound. The bells would be triggered as he walked by. Um, that was basically all he did. <laughs> Nine different kinds of bells going bong, bong, for the entire duration of the LP. Now, I'm sure he thought it was chortlingly successful. But um, as an album, it's surprisingly desirable, but it's uh, it's one of those things you're never really going to listen to, <laughs> let's be honest. Um, it does mention there's a sort of a humorous element to what he was doing, but he was just being clever for clever's sake, and uh, in the end, in my opinion, coming away looking a bit stupid. <laughs> Very weird. Here's a very popular man, Robert Wyatt. The End of an Ear, his first solo album. For me, almost unlistenable. Uh, it's just all over the place. There's elements of free jazz and uh, he uses his um, uh, effects pedal, an echo pedal, which he used a lot of his time on his voice. Uh, it's patchy at best. I don't think anybody who has a Robert White collection probably listens to this record more than once, maybe a track or two from it, but it's it's just, as I say, for me, unlistenable. Um, there's some interesting quirky moments, but sorry Robert, once is enough. After this he kind of got back to his uh, normal experimental. This is very, very experimental without tunes without any kind of purpose or or point really. Um, strange because this is the kind of thing he was trying to avoid and get away from when he left Soft Machine. Um, but this he's taken to the nth degree. He may disagree. <laughs> Lol Coxhill, Digswell Duets uh, with Simon Emerson and Varian Weston. Simon Emerson is an electronic composer of sorts. He did a lot of electronic tape work and stuff. Um, and he processes Lowell's saxophone on side one. This is the most interesting side. Side two has a pianist accompaniment. But it is just a lot of squawking noise, just for the sake of it, really. I mean, I'm sure they're trying to experiment and uh, push the limits, but the limits sometimes are pushed too far without a framework, without any kind of, uh, kind of goal almost. They're just using what they're using, improvising, and it doesn't always come out successful. Um, on the back here it says, uh, in the music you will hear the stuck pig and the blackbird, the despairing suicide and the enraptured lover, the lion and the lamb. <laughs> come on. Weird for the sake of it, eccentric, known for being eccentric, did some great stuff of course, this is not his best. Very famous, strange band, The Residents, Fingerprints. I believe that um, their first two or three albums are probably sounding like this because I couldn't really play their instruments. <laughs> But there's something incredibly sort of spooky, mysterious and unusual about this band. Um, I personally really quite like this album um, and I do like some of their sounds. This is weird, but weird in a good way. Eccentric, yes. Esoteric, definitely. Eclectic, yes. It's off the radar. But it's got catchy, sort of silly, uh, almost spooky circus kind of uh, tunes to it. I personally think the Residents 
had some great moments. Um, some of her later stuff when they got into the 80s I didn't really like so much. Um, the, the synthesizers and things just didn't sound as good, didn't really connect with me. Um, I remember years ago uh, I was going to a test department gig with a couple of friends and we stopped off somewhere to, uh, somewhere to pick someone up and he, there was someone else who was around there who said that he was working for the residents at the time and of course no one knows who they are and he actually had to sign disclaimers saying he would never ever say who he was working for. He actually met uh, one I believe, one or two of the residents. Um, but he, was, he had to have a, there was a solicitor there telling him, you can't do this, you can't do that, and you can't do the other. Because they're famously mysterious and, you know, people ridiculously think they're the Beatles and all sorts of other people in the band. But anyway, that is a good Weird Al. Affiliated Snake Finger. I think this is, this is Chewing Hides for Sound, which the title itself I mean, it's just marvellous. It sums up kind of where they're coming from. Completely off the wall. And he, I mean, so unique to be able to come up with the, what he came up with here, which is almost bending every single note to make it sound out of tune all the time. Um, but with some incredibly good quirky tunes, he's backed by the residents here. There are some wonderful numbers on here. There's the first track. It's actually a cover version of Craftwork, the model. I mean, there's just some wonderful stuff on here. Kill the Great Raven, Magic and Ecstasy, What Will, The Picnic in the Jungle, The Vultures of Bombay, Who is the Culprit, Who is the Victim. Wonderful, wonderful record. Weird in a really good way. I mean, once you listen to an album like this, I don't think there's, I mean, you'll realise there's no one else who sounds like it. How he came up with it, I don't know what it was. It was going on in his head to come up with this kind of sound. But it is unique and uh, highly recommended and this one BJ Cole the new hovering dog bizarre it's actually got progressive music it's progressive rock in places um, a few of the songs are very progressive Interesting instrumentation on here. There's all sorts of synthesizers, and this is 1972 on um, United Artists. And what's interesting about it? I mean, a the synthesizer. There are a couple of pieces on here. The last piece on side two is just synthesizer, for example. Um, it's a very unusual and obscure sounding record. Nothing else I've got here actually sounds anything like it. Um, Verse, synthesizer, dobro, cheng, steel guitar, electric violins, all sorts of stuff on here. Mike Giles is on here, Danny Thompson, Francis Monkman um, playing the harpsichord. Lots of different people who are famous in the prog world. You can see all the different uh, credits here. And all the lyrics are on the back. Um, very unusual album and uh, quite a collectible record. Um, found it at a charity shop, of course, last year for a pound. Um, but really, I recommend seeking some of this out because it's very unusual, and I think a great listen. Uh, the synthesizer as well. Don't be put off by the idea of early 70s synth. The sound of this, the synthesizers on here is quite amazing. It's not cheesy. It's really analog and deep and uh, powerful sound at times. This is one of the two volumes that uh, Chris Cole, John Coltrane 68 showed and it really caught my ear when he said that this has no melody <laughs> and he's right, it has no melody but this has, and I've said it um, on the Instagram thing some of the deepest, darkest, most heavy synthesizer I've ever heard and the bass out of that synthesizer is uh, monumental absolutely stunning but there is nothing for your ear to grab onto here you want to listen to a kind of a rhythm or a beat or something that's not there it's noise but not noise just you know noise it's really captivating listen 
Uh, he's manipulating the synthesizers incredibly well and creating an atmosphere like nothing else um, you're ever really likely to hear. This is esoteric. This is eclectic. This is out there. Um, plain weird. I think it's kind of beyond weird. It's in a unique category all on its own. Um, at some point I might find the follow-up. The follow-up is a little bit more, I would say, melodious, but um, maybe more gentle than this particular uh, LP, the first of the two that he released in the same year, I believe. This is Jean-Baptiste Barrier Pandemonium. Wonderful. And just to finish off, quite a quirky record. This is New Wave. Brian Brain, Unexpected Noises. Um, there's all sorts of stuff on here. Um, guitar and ridiculous backing vocals. Um, ridiculous bird calls. Synth, um, fuzz bass. This is there's some great, quirky, uh, catchy, and I think really quite unusual sounds for a new wave record. It's got certain new wave elements to it, like sort of a sort of late 70s sound you expect. Um, but it's a unique album, quite distinct, very different, and uh, well worth a spin. And it's actually quite a cheap record to buy. There's some really good songs on here. I recommend definitely giving this a listen. Anyway, that was a few out there albums. And uh, I'll see you all soon.